everyone, welcome to our newest addition to our Dolly Tail series, which if you're new to the channel, this is like our doll memories. Today we're going to be starting the newest sub-series to this where we go through each decade from the 1960s up until the 2010s. And we're going to be talking about all types of dolls in these videos, it's not just going to be about one. What we really loved about these decades, and we're going to be talking about ones obviously that we didn't grow up with. So what better decade to start with in the 60s? I do want to say that I have collection videos on just about all the dolls in my collection. So if you want to see specifically like my dolls from the 60s and 70s or all my play sets or fashions, I have videos in my collections displays playlist and I also have everything up to date pictured on my Flickr which you can look at Flickr if you don't have an account so um, this is an overview we're not going to pull up a ton of things because we've obviously documented these thoroughly in other like ways so I hope you understand. I also want to add that this obviously won't be quite as diverse as some of our later videos um, on the Dolly Decades because we don't have as much from the 60s. Yes, because um, I was born in 1991, Colleen was born in 1987, so we came way, way after this. With that being said, I know that things came out in different times at different parts of the world, so what might have come out in like the 60s here might have come out later in other countries. Excuse me, ancient double O-L. <laughs> Rude. Rudeness. Okay, kind of starting as an overview of what we love about this decade. First of all, we started collecting these in 2011 when we actually got back into dolls after a long break. I was about 19 years old and I got collector books for the first time and that was when I really got to see what the 60s Barbies were like and I really got to explore the variety and I just fell in love with some of the dolls from this decade and after that we began hunting some of them down on eBay, we looked for some at secondhand places and antique stores and our dad specifically used to take us to this antique store that had quite a bit of like 60s and 70s Barbie stuff and that's where some of our items came from. I think most of that time when I'm thinking about 60s Barbies but I did have a few things from that decade as a kid we had a skipper and um, I also had a playset but what most stands out to me in this decade like when I get something from the 60s is I'm just like mystified by how old it is like not, not to offend you if you were born in the 60s but like if you think about a toy that someone played with and then they probably gave to their kids to play with and you you come across these dolls and sometimes they're in beautiful condition I just can't wrap my head around how something that's been through so much could be so pristine or even if they are beat up when you clean them and they bounce back like how much life they still have in them it's just amazing and whenever we f piece things together in a lot um, like in our torture treasures transformation video there were some 60s Barbies and my heart just like melted when I saw it. I was so excited. It's always really cool to find stuff from the 60s in the wild because it's not an everyday occurrence and it's really cool. I also would have to say that dolls and toys from this time frame were so much more appreciated back then. Um, like my mom for instance couldn't afford to have real Barbies when she was growing up. She was born in 1962 but she didn't have any real Barbies and I noticed that most kids who did grow up with dolls from the early 60s at least um, they only had one or two like I would say kids probably didn't usually have more than five because they were just comparatively priced wise so much more expensive and so much more luxurious and if you've seen these dolls from this time frame I mean the quality of their clothing is mind-blowing I also feel like the way they were marketed was different they were marketed where you you know only bought like instead of buy a different doll in a different outfit they really pushed fashions I feel like they really emphasized fashions over buying more dolls the idea was to keep buying different outfits and put the dolls in, which from an and economical and spatial standpoint makes more sense. A lot of people also um, were more self-sufficient back then and there were so many like mothers and grandmothers and kids who can make their own doll clothes and I have some examples of those to show you too. And I just think that's really sweet and I wish that people appreciated things more like they did back then because you know a lot of dolls and toys that come out today are made in such a disposable way and as someone who like 
I love old things and I just love recycling things and giving things new life and for me it's like painful when I see how like cheap things are or when you know people buy things just to use once and toss it aside like back then things weren't made on the same scale of mass production and it was just more treasured and when I see dolls from this time frame I can tell how much more loved they were whereas dolls from nowadays you'll see them and they're still wearing the original outfits and they've never been played with and they were just laying at the Salvation Army so that's something I really appreciate about that time frame and I kind of wish it was more like that I wish people took more pride in things so uh, we're going to start by showing you the dolls I got into these this past year and you guys have seen them on my channel a few times these are, um, they were like Barbie's competitors. It was uh, Ideal Toys. We have Tammy and Ted. So she's supposed to be more of like an innocent take on Barbie. She's got like more babyish features. And she, Ted was actually my first of these two. And when I fell in love with him, I kind of wanted a Tammy. And their clothes are very comparable in quality to Barbie's, which I'll talk more about later. But yeah, basically um, if you find Tammy and Ted stuff, you'll probably mistaken it for Barbies. I just love them. I think they're really cute and whimsical and they're definitely not as good quality. Like they're, they're a lot more hollow and flimsy, but there is a certain charm about them that I feel like they're friendlier looking. Yeah, I really like them. And um, I don't know, he kind of reminds me of my Pepe. He's cute. Especially in that coat. Um, so Barbie had family in this decade and there was a lot of importance placed on like family and friends, which we love. This is my uh, childhood bendable leg. She's on a straight leg body, but she is uh, Yeah, um, I actually just got the bathing suit. I got her at a yard sale for, I want to say $2 uh, back in 2004. So she's our childhood sick. These and she's our first. Uh, we didn't really appreciate her as much as we could have because she just looks so different than what we were used to. and. Um, she was on her original body and it was all gross and had cut feet. Scooter, I got with that at an antique store in 2011, in that like time frame we were getting into them. I got her for 20 bucks, I thought it was steep at first so I kind of doubled back for her. She was wearing like some handmade outfit. And then this is another doll I got at the antique stores, um, my little red. Um, I got her for like, I think less than $7 um, in the schoolgirl fashion and She's probably my favorite vintage doll. And I just really like, her. I like her the most. And then for me, what started my um, kick for 60s dolls when we got back into collecting was the Flocked Kens. Uh, this is not my first guy. My first guy I bought on eBay, but this is my second guy I got the same summer for a dollar. He also was the one I learned to flock the hair on. Um, I bought this outfit on eBay. Um, so his name is Martin, but I love the the old, oldest Kens. I think they're super cute, and they're a lot heavier than like Ted. Like he holds his shape really well, whereas Ted kind of like, you know, flops. flops. So you can definitely tell that Mattel probably had more money to put into um, Barbie. And then I have a few other examples like Midge. Um, I just got her this year, but I've always loved vintage midges. She was one of the ones that captured my attention right away. And I love how um, some of the like cuter characters from this time frame had like freckles and they just look really sweet and approachable as opposed to like Barbie herself where we have um, my swirl ponytail and my one of my bubble cuts, Kathy. I got them recently too. You can see they have sort of like grumpier faces and they look more like, mm, I can't be bothered. Which is really cute, but as a kid I liked friendlier looking dolls. And um, I did uh, reroute my friend over here. But my uh, first old Barbie was my other bubble cut named Bubbles. Another one that I love from this decade is Francie. Now, usually when I think Francie, I kind of think like 70s mod. She did come out in the mid 60s and my dad bought me a reproduction of these at an indoor flea market when I was like 12 or 13 and I've just kind of had a soft spot for Francie ever since and I wanted like an authentic vintage Francie and she's one of my newer acquisitions. I just kind of grabbed who was like closest to the top of the container but she's also my nicest Francie and she's undressing. Francie's but not that kind of I video. love her. I think she's like really sweet but like classic beauty with her eyelashes mm, and close lips. And then as you get towards the like later end of the decade, this is when they introduced the twist and turn waist. And this basic body shape is kind of what was seen on Barbie until the very end of the 90s. Yeah, it's so funny because people who don't collect dolls are always like, oh, they're from the 60s because the body says so. And it's funny because most of the time they're, they're not. They're not even close. We said the clothes from this decade are impeccable. You have to be careful when you wash them because 
They bleed a lot, so it's important to color separate them and to use color catchers. I also noticed that reds and blues are really common. Yes, uh, and I feel like she didn't have, like Barbie in particular, didn't have like the pink color palette in her wardrobe that she does now. And um, they just were dressed very realistically, whereas I feel that a lot of dolls these days are kind of dressed bodily. Like even if they have trendy shapes, they're they're dressed in a way that's not very realistic a lot of the time, whereas these look like little miniature people and um, they would have real zippers and real buttons and metal snaps and real knit things and their accessories that would go with it would be metal. It's like astounding. And Tammy's were very similar. So obviously we have a lot more clothes than this than what you're going to see, but we've picked out just a few sampler items so you can kind of get an idea. So we have uh, my touchdown outfit. This was the one I got off eBay. I actually found one in the wild that's a lot nicer. My painted Ken wears it. But you can see it has like the lace-up detail. It came with matching socks. I even got the cleats and the helmet and the um, football. football with mine. And then uh, Ted here is wearing, this was my second piece of vintage Ken, like 60s Ken clothing I ever got. He's wearing it with modern clothes. But do you see like the beautiful tags that they put in everything? It's a rally day jacket. Yeah, and they each had um, like a special tag. So like Skipper would have one, Ken would have one. And it just feels so real. There's even like a little like hook thing. And you can see Tammy has a similar design. This is her jet set outfit, I believe. She has these little toggles that you can close her jacket with, and it's this really thick faux leather, but it doesn't feel like the kind that would um, peel. And her sweater's knit, and then she's got these cute pants, and all of them have like metal snaps. You're not going to see Velcro um, in this decade. Silk and Flame and Red Flare. These are meant to be paired together. This is like an iconic Barbie fashion, and this is one of the originals, not a reproduction. You can see it's kind of wrinkled. This will bleed like nobody's business, but you can see I just saw the tag. It's like lined and everything. It's really yeah. nice. Um, it's like you can see the coat is lined and it matches the dress and it's just so soft and luxurious and Skipper's matches that was something too. They would make matching family outfits. What's hers called? Silk and Fancy. Silk and Fancy. Really cute. Yeah you'd actually see her tag. Yep and that's the Skipper tag. Rainy day checkers on scooter. And this is Town Togs and this has a zipper. Yeah, you can see the heavy duty zipper, and this is one of my favorites. Country Picnic. Uh, this is definitely my favorite. I love it. So and pretty. Um, then we have some loose ones. So these are some Tammy outfits. You can see how similar they are in color scheme and everything to Barbie's, and they even have the um, snaps. And Tammy has a special tag as well. You can kind of oh, see yeah. part yeah. of it. Yep. And that's, there. That's a good tag. Um, it's going to look like 60s Barbie clothing, but it's going to be bigger. And you can see, like, even the purses would have real zippers. And um, this a lot is skate of date. Yep came with like little nylons. Winter holiday. Winter holiday and this is one of the um, like hoodies that has a zipper and this material feels like something you would wear. It's very thick. Drum majorette? Drum majorette. The metal snaps, the details. I knew this was old. This is one of my first really old pieces of Barbie clothes. I got it with a handful of things at the flea market for like 25 cents each. And it's gorgeous. And this was my, I think my first six duties Barbie item. Um, these are both kind of destroyed, but this is the evening splendor coat, I believe. You can see that like sometimes they would sell coats with matching dresses. This was cut and this is missing its fur, but this was one of the first items I got on a midge doll that was mutilated and um, it's clearly seen better days, but it was once upon a time beautiful. It, it had like all this beautiful texture and it was lined. This is majestic blue. I got this very recently in the lot with Kathy and you can see like it's a slightly cheaper feeling than other things from this decade, but you can see it's like double-sided. And then I even brought some homemade things. That's all over. These were in our uh, 60s Barbie dream house. Yes, Got and it. you can tell someone made this and they put like little flowers and beads. They made matching panties. And this coat, you would think it was real, um, but it's got this beautiful lining and it's got all these nice snaps. Like whoever made these was such a seamstress and the hat is like, matches and this is one of Colleen's favorites and I do use these a lot. You can see they use like this really pretty fabric. So a lot of homemade doll clothes from this era are so legit seeming. Oliver, you're not from the 60s. You can't be in this video. The last thing we want to talk about are the play sets. They're also predominantly, at least for Mattel, they were made of cardboard because you have to keep in mind this decade kind of um, pioneered what we know today is the current fashion doll. So they were experimenting with a lot of things and while you do see 
cardboard still to this day. It was like entire play sets. Like I have my 60s Barbie's New Dream House. It, it is a pain in, to set up. It is in my collection um, video for play sets of this decade, but it's my favorite thing by far. I did bring up my Francie house. Some of them were case style. This one is actually like a vinyl case and it opens up. And I think the idea with a lot of these was that things were compact. It's missing a lot, but. So yeah, we love this decade and we definitely appreciate it for its quality, its realism, and the fact that I feel like these dolls were so ahead of their time. Dolls before them were like composition dolls. They were made with natural materials, things like uh, wool and mohair and stuff that deteriorates over time and uh, can't be restored in the same way. But the great thing about like Barbie, Tammy, and other dolls is they're like the vinyl and the plastic is they can be restored. And in the same way you would restore a newer doll, which I don't think a lot of people realize. They assume because it's the 60s, like I can't oil wash it, I can't put soap on it. And they're really hard wearing. Like these dolls are like little battle axes. They can, they yeah, can they, take a lot. They, I appreciate that they paved the way for what we know and love now as the fashion doll. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed. We are going to be going in chronological order, so the next episode will be the 70s, and you will see a bit more diversity because we have other doll types besides just Barbie, really. Yeah. So, until uh, next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.